Hi, hey everybody, and welcome to our Black Artist Seminar Series. Today we are joined by Rob Gray, who I am so happy is here because he's going to tell us all about NFTs, which I know so little about, um, and really the minting process. It's been really cool to see that NFTs are pretty much here to stay, and artists are able to really make a livelihood out of them. So just as a general matter, Black Art House hosts the seminar series to enable our Black artists to be able to thrive, um, learn more about the general art ecosystem and advance their careers. So Rob, I'm gonna let you take it away. Hi, my name is Robert Gray. I'm a art dealer, art consultant, curator, um, do a little bit of everything in the, um, in the art world. I buff our walls, I'll do security, whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, and we're here today to go over a few things is talk about minting an NFT and also to share resources and just answer general questions. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to let you know about our website, which is IRL Underground. Um, I'm going to share that. <coughs> I'm going to share my, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to share my screen and um, I'll put the website. I will actually put the link in the chat so everyone can follow along. See, there we go. So I need to share my screen. I know about NFTs, but I don't know about Zoom. There we go. Short content screen, start broadcast, there we go. Okay, so what we have right here is our research doc for art and blockchain. Um, and I'm just gonna go down this one by one. So first is MetaMask. This is my favorite wallet to use. I highly recommend it. Um, it's very compatible. You can download it on your phone, your iPad, and you can even on, use it on your desktop, laptop, whatever it may be. Wait, Rob, um, can I actually inter, intervene for a second? And actually, would you mind giving us, at least for me, a really high level of NFTs and then talk a little bit about like what, what is a wallet and what is the purpose of it and what is the purpose of com some of these things that you're talking about? Absolutely. An NFT is a non-fungible token. Um, non-fungible tokens are unique items. Um, just like a piece of art, just a regular piece of art, you can't trade one piece of art for another piece of art. They're going to have two different values, but a fungible item is a dollar bill. If we all exchange dollar bills, we all can walk away and still be good because everyone has a dollar. It doesn't matter if it's a different serial number on a dollar, if it has a stain on the top left corner, it's a dollar, it all works, you can all buy stuff with it. Those are fungible things that you can pass around. But if I'm an artist and you're an artist and my work goes for $10,000 and your work goes for $100, I'm not trading you my 10,000 piece for your $100 piece. They just, that's what makes it non-fungible. So um, NFTs are non-fungible tokens and NFTs just don't have to be art. That's just one side of looking at it. Um, the NFT is a token that represents things. NFTs can represent a domain name. It can represent a utility. It can be like a coupon. It can be a really, it's limited to your imagination. So NFTs in this conversation, we're really going to speak about art, but never limit yourself to thinking that NFTs are only this digital art. It can be the canvas that you have on a wall. And that NFT is like a certificate of authenticity for an artist. That's the easiest way for me to explain it to artists is that's a way to prove that that piece of artwork is yours. Let's take the Mona Lisa, for example. There are people are really good at making like duplicates and forging things. There are 10 other Mona Lisas that look exactly the same and even the greatest um, curators and collectors, they can't tell, they're like, I'm stumped. It, they look identical. But if that was an NFT, you can trace it back and be like, yo, this is a real piece. The other ones are made from my like, Foster's accounts or whatever it may be. So um, those are what an NFT is and like a brief overview of what NFTs are. So NFTs are really anything. And this conversation, we're really going to focus on art. Um, a wallet is a, a digital wallet. It's like Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal, how if someone sends you money on one of those, you have like a little uh, wallet that has your money in it, and you got to press a few extra buttons to actually get it to go to your bank account. Um, that is what a digital wallet is. And these digital wallets can also hold your NFTs, but for the most part, they're just a wallet, just like you carry in your pocket or your purse. 
that holds your assets. Um, and as far as the digital wallet, it holds your digital assets as cryptocurrency and um, art. And what are the good, um, I guess, pieces of NFTs as opposed to like just selling your artwork normally, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that you automatically get your royalties for like each of those transactions, right? So if my art is um, mm -hmm. shared once, shared twice, shared three times, I get the money back for each of those or like whatever royalty, right? Absolutely. And I want to say shared isn't the right word because you can share <laughs> it multiple times. People can right click and save it. Um, but when it's sold, um, yeah. you think about the regular art world. When your artwork is sold one time, you give that commission to the gallery. You make a little cut. And then for the rest of the life of that piece, it went to 10 other people that they've been an auction house. People made a lot of money off your artwork. You'll never receive another dime from that. And that can be digital artwork, really anything. So the great thing about this is it's a really a like kind of world built for the artist by the artist. So you're able to make profits and royalties from every time that piece is sold again on a secondhand market, third hand market, fourth hand market. Every time it's sold, you're gonna get a little piece of it. You can select zero. So if that case, you do wanna make sure you always put between about 10 and 30% is about average. Um, but that's one of the steps in the minting process that we'll go through and you'll just click right there how much percentage you want to go back to you. That's um, one benefit. Uh, the other one is I mentioned a little bit earlier, but certificate of authenticity and it's a digital ledger. So you're able to see um, where your art is. You can always find it, but you can also if you're a collector, this is really where it comes uh, comes in help. And most artists, most your, a lot of your artwork is going to be bought by other artists. So you can see and you can click on someone's account and you can see like, okay, their pieces are actually being sold and they actually are on, being sold on the secondhand market. So this is someone I want to invest into. Um, so it's a good way to be transparent and open and communicate with people who are actually buying into your art. And a lot of people, when, when as we level up and we become, we all are legit artists, but as our price go up and people are spending $10,000, they spend 20K on your piece, they wanna do a little research. Before I spend $20,000, I wanna research and educate myself and see, hey, what am I spending this money on? Is this just a person who did an NFT and they never showed one? Or this person who did one NFT and then they haven't done anything in six months? Or is this someone who consistent, who is taking the space serious? So it's like a portfolio. It's a digital ledger that people can look at and then they're able to study and look at and see, okay, they are taking their craft serious or they're not taking it serious. So um, some people like they are very intentional with how they mint things. Um, but if you're going to take a year, two years before you mint anything, just mint stuff and just get it going, just start it off. And it's better than doing nothing. Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and one more clarification question, I will let you go. Mm -hmm. um, minting is generally the process of like quote unquote, like uploading your art to like the market, Absolutely. right? Okay. Absolutely. It's tokenizing. It's what's putting on the blockchain. There's a few different other words like minting, tokenizing, things like that. It's all the same thing. And what it reminds me of is like being on MySpace or Black Planet. And like when you upload things, like you fill out your description, you upload the picture, and then you press a few buttons and click. And that's pretty much it for minting. Once you go through the few basics, there's three or four buttons you got to press to actually mint something, but um, it's pretty straightforward once you go through the, the first three or four steps. That analogy is great, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really is. Um, are, are we good to go back to the research doc? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Um, I live by this thing, so definitely recommend everyone to check it out. It's then offered a lot of opportunities for me. Give me one second. I'm going to share the screen again. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see is MetaMask and I can go to my MetaMask account. So this is what MetaMask looks like on the iPad. You got a place for your tokens. You got a place for your NFTs. You can even go to different networks. Like we have the Polygon network. We got the Exodon network also. So you have different things that you can do. The most popular one, so we don't confuse everyone, is gonna be the main network, which is the Ethereum network. OpenSea also has a few other things. Um, a few major things you wanna know are gonna be the browser. 
Um, if you're on your iPad or on your phone, you're not going to be able to connect OpenSea to Safari or things like that. You're going to want to do it directly through the OpenSea app. You can see like your transaction history, people who send you stuff, the money that you're sending out. All this is open if you have some OX address. So uh, I don't really care if people actually see it. Um, and wallets, when this is your OX address, you can copy it. But if you want to receive crypto, that's your address that you want to send people. You want to always double check and be sure before you tell someone to send you money. Uh, verify that the last, the starting four and the last four are exactly what you think they are. Because once that money gets sent out, you cannot retrieve it again. So always double check, dot your I's and cross your T's. Um, and I think I skipped some things with MetaMask. Um, before you even set up MetaMask, when you first download it, you're going to have to create a, you don't create it, they give you a 12 word seed phrase, is a randomly generated word. So with that seed, you want to make sure, don't do it, don't put it in your computer, don't put it in your phone, you want to write those down on a physical piece of paper. I've even heard of people in it's metal way in case the heart the house gets set on fire that don't get lost either but for me i write my down on a piece of paper i put it in a pelican suitcase and i put padlocks on it so no one is ever able to access that information those 12 words are like the key to your bank account um there has been instances where people have gone to jail and the police try to take all their money the government try to take their money and they can't they don't have access to it so it's very important that you don't share these keys i will never ask for them um, OpenSea will never ask for them. No one will ever ask for these keys. So um, if you're on Discord and someone asks you for your keys, do not give it to them. Um, so that's MetaMask. They are other wallets that you, you might consider and other people do. Coinbase is another popular one. Um, but I like to just stay with MetaMask. That's my favorite one. Does anyone have any questions about MetaMask? Um, feel free to raise your hand. We're all good on MetaMask. Let me make sure I'm not see something in the chat. Rob, if okay. you're brand new to this space, is getting a wallet like the first step that you would do? A hundred percent. I will connect my Coinbase account because that takes a few days. So I would download Coinbase, get that account set up, make sure you connect your bank account to your um, your Coinbase account. That way, if you do sell an NFT and you do a drop in the sales out in 30 seconds and you got to pay your rent the next day, you don't want to wait seven days to uh, verify your Coinbase account because it's going to slow down that money getting to your actual account. So um, I say they're side by side. Um, get a MetaMask, make sure you do that right. And then you want to connect, get a Coinbase and connect that to your bank account because that's how you're going to buy Ethereum um, that you can mm -hmm. send to MetaMask and do what you want. And that's how you're going to take your money and you deposit it into your Coinbase. And then into your bank account. Got it. Awesome. So I'm gonna go to the next one. Oh. Carry on is the portfolio balance. Um, I think that's very important. Um, on my laptop, I watch a bunch of other wallets who aren't even mine. But I want to see the transactions that they do. I want to see the coins that they're buying into. I want to see the NFTs that they are getting. It's just about doing research on it. Um, so Zerion, well, let me see what that's going to pop up. See the website, and I have my Zerion. And I'll let you see what it looks like in the app. So you have like a watch list, which you can go to. And you can see other things that are in that watch list. So you're able to see this is one is my personal hardware wallet that I have some things in. So you're able to see um, Rare Unique, which is Unique One, a great platform, which has to support a lot of our events. Shout out to them. Um, our Fox is something I believe in. Token isn't doing that great, but um, that's a part of the game. And you can also see like histories, NFTs. You can see like a full portfolio with that. So the same things that are in my wallet that you saw in MetaMask, those same NFTs you're going to see right here. The same history you're going to see right there. The same overview you're going to see right there. So um, it's just a way that you can see the full portfolio that you're looking to see. Let's see. What did I do with that? There we go.
Anyone got any questions about Zerion? I do. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I do, Rob. Hi, Rob. Um, so with Zerion, um, so it, it's it's connected to your MetaMask and it's connected to your coin, your your coin wallet as well. Or I guess I'm, nope. I think I'm a little confused on all, all you need is an OX address. Um, because the blockchain is open, it's a open digital ledger. So I can go type in Elon Musk. And it'll just be like, this is just on your watch list. So these are different accounts that you can like watch. You can also connect yours if you wanted to. Like my first one was my personal one, but it can uh, really be anything. You can watch anyone's wallet. You can see anyone's OX address and see all their transactions because they want to be transparent. And he just said something. So let me see if she's. Yeah, uh, tokens don't get fully added into MetaMask. You have to add the tokens, where Zerion shows everything. So there is a certain way that you have to add uh, custom tokens um, in MetaMask. Let's say if you're doing like all coin, if you got Ethereum, Ethereum will pop up, those things. Um, but Zerion really gives you a full, transparent, your full portfolio. Like there's certain things that when I put up my MetaMask, it didn't show up, but it showed up in the Zerion because I didn't add those tokens yet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm gonna, and thank you, Annie, for your help. And once again, Annie is my mentor. She's the founder of IRL Art. Um, and she's also my best friend. So we always collaborate and team up on a lot of things. So I appreciate her supporting me in the background. That is not it. Um, next is multi-signature safe. If you're doing, any, if it's just for self, this might not be something that attracts you. Um, but for like IRL, we have multiple people, we have a uh, treasury. So we have multi-signature um, set up for us. So in order for money to leave like the company account, um, Annie would sign off, I would sign off, Jake would sign off. It will be several people before that money leaves the account. We all have to agree up on it. So that's what a multi-signature safe is. I'll click on that just for you all can go through it. And this will tell you a little bit more. It's just a general website. You all can look over this as you feel as you need to, but this really isn't for individual artists. Next one is a hardware wallet. I highly recommend this for everyone. Um, you do want to be smart about it. Um, but the hardware wallet is Ledger is one of them. I have a Trezor, um, but we gave out 20 of these during one of our events that we did here in Denver. So shout out to Endgame who put that together, um, but it keeps your money safe. Um, you're gonna need to connect it to actual, actual like a laptop or a desktop and it has a pin code and a few other extra ways of security. Um, but I highly recommend everyone to get a hardware wallet. Um, this digital space is, is tricky. It can get confusing. Unfortunately, if you lose your money or if you give your, you click a wrong link and they do something, all your money can be taken away. I've heard bad stories about people losing a lot of money. And one way to protect yourself is getting a hardware wallet. Um, they're 50, 75, hundred bucks online. Um, and they're well worth it. So it's just a way to back up everything. What you saw on Zerion, that other OX address was my hardware wallet. And I have that locked away in a secret place. And when I plug that in, I have to type in a password and I have to do a few other steps, but it gives me that extra sense of security um, that I really appreciate, especially when you're going into this world. Anyone have any questions about the multi-sig or the hardware wallet? Awesome. Here we go. 
So this is just another way to secure your, your wallet and your seed phrase, just more security. You can never have too much security. And it's just breaking it down, stainless steel, fireproof, shockproof. Really, your wallet can hold a lot of money. There's people who have a million dollars in their wallet and they wanna make sure they're going about it a protective way to make sure that their things are staying safe. So if their house sets on fire, you don't want your house to set on fire and you got a $500 million written down on a piece of paper. So people do things like this, where they get the stainless steel device and they put their C phrase on there just in case their house does set on fire, they have someone who can get to it. So this is going to be NFT storage. It's a free decentralized storage and bandwidth for NFTs, IFPFS, and file points. Um, it's a kind of a brand new service and you can do a lot of stuff off chain, um, but it's just a way to store your NFTs and make sure that you're able to um, actually display them with larger file sizes. So feel free to check that out. This is a little bit advanced, so I don't want to, I feel like this is more of a beginner class. So I don't want to go too much in depth with that and, and confuse anyone. Um, so the fun part is going to be these open NFT platforms. Um, they don't require application. Uh, they're, they're not curated pretty much. If, if you have a wallet, then you're able to go on these and you're able to tokenize a piece. Um, so my personal favorite is going to be Unique One. We're going to click on their site. The reason that Unique One is my favorite, Unique One, we're part of their community. They have supported a plethora of our events from our, our Black Gallery, which is in February. They help us do a, a in real life space and also a digital space where we're able to tokenize, pay the gas fees for over 50 Black artists. Um, they also help with our Black Love Mural Festival and uh, our Spork Dow event that we did. Really anything that we need help with or we ask help for, they're there to support us. They're a nonprofit based out in Tokyo and they've even had a representative fly into Denver and check out our Black Love Mural Festival and actually see what we're doing. So they're very involved. They're very personable. They can easily be reached. So a big shout out to Unique One. Um, they have a few different marketplaces, which I love about them. ETH Marketplace, which is a main network, is probably going to be the most popular one. And what most artists are going to want to use, as you're going to see on there, we have categories they got all they got rare black love mural festival ira lart they even gave us our own little sections on here so they've been super great to work with a uh, nice interface and pretty much things are right here where you can bomb super easy even pieces like this which um might be a famous artist but looks like a someone younger did it um but he's asking 227 dollars for his piece so um, it's really easy to buy. You can put a description, you have comments, you can even have references in there um, to really um, give the artist some credibility. So really cool. Love their layout. Make sure y'all get them, check them out. Um, you're going to see like the XDI marketplace, which is a cheaper way to go about minting. Same marketplace. Um, and they offer a lot of cool things, but these are cheaper to buy. Gas fees are a lot cheaper. Ira Lard is gonna be our category. So you're gonna see a lot of pieces from our Black Love Mural Festival, which they funded, and they're gonna be available to purchase on there. So the most popular one that you're gonna see and really hear about is OpenSea. OpenSea, um, I like them. I was just actually on a, a call with them and their social media manager is a Nigerian woman. Um, and I didn't know that. So shout out to OpenSea. And they're trying to get me to sign in. I'm trying to. I'm going to cut off my screen just so I can log in really fast. And then I'll share that again just for y'all can see what OpenSea is like. Rob, it's so cool to hear um, you being able to partner with all these different platforms. That's really great. A lot of that help is Annie. She's uh, building these relationships and things for us and then just giving us a tool to be successful. So big shout out to Annie for really creating these opportunities and always thinking about Black voices yeah. um, when she creates these opportunities. So if, um, let's just say an artist on here wants to start working with you all, how is, um, what's a good way to contact you or get involved? Uh, send us an email or contact us via Instagram or Twitter. 
I'm doing an exhibit in December and I'll, I'll be accepting artists for that. Um, and we can be in the show. And with IRL Art, we work with a, with a plethora of artists. Um, probably the most notable is gonna be Beeple. And he tokenized his first two pieces in 2020. One of her galleries, she's been doing uh, NFT galleries since 2019. Um, she has about six artists that are in Christie's and Sullivan's and who started off at her uh, her gallery. So um, it's great. really, I encourage everyone to <coughs> participate with us, try to be involved. We built a lot of collectors and we're involved in a lot of communities. So they love what we're doing. So they always check out our shows. Um, we've even had people inside of our one of our digital galleries just walking around and checking it out mm -hmm. during our Fork Dow event. So there's always, you never know who can be in some of the rooms that we curate and we organize because we've dedicated ourselves to this space mm -hmm. um, just for so long. Just everything we do, we live and breathe has, has been NFTs, at least for like the last two years. We've focused like really on everything we're doing. We're integrating NFTs, metaverse, crypto into it in some way, shape, form or fashion. So I'm going to share the OpenSea page um, so everyone can see that. It looks like Annie just put something in the chat for people who are interested. Um, she put some templates for proposals. Sorry, I don't know a word. Twist Absolutely. It. Those are the cheat. That's like a cheat code almost. I can't believe that um, there's really someone out here giving away like all the sauce, the recipes. Um, we gave someone this exact thing and they went and did it and they received like 20K in funding. Um, so that wow. was brand in game association. So. I tell people about this all the time, but very few people do the three extra steps that you need to, to actually make this happen. Um, so big shout out to him, the people who have the courage and, and believe in themselves to do those three extra steps and actually ask for it. Um, they have received some success. So don't be afraid. Don't feel like your proposal isn't good enough. They'll just give you feedback like, hey, do X, Y, and Z. We love your general thing. Where are you going with? Um, and that's for a lot of DAOs. So make sure y'all check it out. Make sure y'all do research on DAOs because it come in handy. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about OpenSea. OpenSea, as you see, is gonna be um, just a really nice platform. You're gonna see a little bit of everything there. They have different categories that you can get for. They have shoes up top. Um, they even have an OpenSea Bible, which I recommend people read. It, it is a little bit lengthy, but um, it's a good way to kind of understand the space. You can do art, music, domain names, virtual worlds, trading cards, collectibles, sports, utility, and everything. So you can really get anything from OpenSea. And the great thing about OpenSea, it will show you your whole portfolio. So even if you buy things from other places, um, like your OX dress will have like a, a result page for everything you have in your account. Um, for this, my account, I don't have much. I think I have like a, a ape gang. That's not a collection. It's uh Yeah, so I have one NFT. I bought this NFT um, about two months ago and I paid like 300 bucks for it, 0 0.09. Um, this collection has been doing pretty good right now. Um, I currently have an offer for, for 2K on it and I bought it for $300. So um, get involved in Discourse. OpenSea always have like some cool stuff on the front of their page. Um, so that's a good way to find things. Um, and if you wanted to mint something, they have lazy minting. So you pay one fee and then you're able to mint things. And then that gas fees um, get passed on to the collector. So OpenSea is really nice. Um, and Rob, actually, I, can you give a quick overview of what gas fees are? Gas fees are transaction fees. So whenever you want to do something, it's going to charge you like a, a transaction fee, which is a gas fee. The gas fee is, let me look at you all. Uh, the gas fee is determined on how crowded the current network is at that time. So let's say if you're actually getting on a physical train and you're going during rush hour and there's a million people trying to jam it's a little bitty train to get us out of the door, that gas fee is going to be higher because there's so many people like all trying to use a network at the same time. So there's certain times during the day, there's certain websites that will let you know what the current gas fees are. Um, and that's one downside to the Ethereum network is gas fees. There's sometimes gas wars, um, there's big drops and that makes the gas fee goes up for everyone. Um, but for the most part, gas fees are just a part of it. 
but there is ways to get around it. When we did the Black Love Mirror Festival and we didn't want to spend thousand dollars in gas fees, we decided to do the things on the XDI network. And so that's a different network, but it has cheaper gas fees. So never let gas fees like deter you from getting into the space. It might stop you from putting it on the main network because you might not have the, the money at that time, but you can either wait until gas fees are lower or you can just convert that into a different currency and put it on a different network. And it's still an NFT, it still pops up. You can still buy it. You can still trade it for Ethereum at that point. It's just a workaround because there's a lot of smart people in this space. So they're working on, they see a problem, then they work on how to fix it. They're like, yo, gas fees are kicking people ass. It's gonna stop people from getting into the space. Let's figure out a way that we can still do what we need to do without spending a lot of money on gas fees. So you'll hear gas fees. Um, a lot of people talk about them like they're the big bad boogeyman. Um, but once you understand the reason for gas fees, there are ways to go around it. Mm. Cool. Sweet. I'm going to share the screen again. Go back. There we go. Rarible, nice website. Um, it's popular. Uh, I haven't mentioned anything or we have never done anything with Rarible, um, but they just have a really clean uh, layout. I heard you might be able to use a Visa or a debit card or something to pay for on Rarible, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, cool layout, just like OpenSea, unique one. Um, they have different pros and cons. Each one has their own community. There are certain people who buy exclusively off Rarible or mint exclusively on Rarible, um, but it's all... It's all up to them. And each platform have things that they're trying to do to beat their stuff off from everyone else. Um, like someone, like I see on the top, say, man, your Instagram posts on Coco NFT with zero gas fees. I don't know what that is, but that might be one reason why you would choose Rarible um, versus OpenSea or Unique One. These are just gonna be other minting sites. There's no shortage of minting sites. Really, I there's. I just heard about another person who's coming out with like a priority NFT marketplace, and you're gonna. I heard Waka Flocka is about to drop an NFT platform. There's gonna be a plethora of NFT platforms that you can go on and on find for days and days. So I'm just gonna click on them just so you can see what they look like. <coughs> if you feel called to it, you see something that you're really feeling then check out that community. It can align with everyone. So I recommend giving them a try. I do recommend trying different platforms. So if you do some stuff on Unique One and then you're feeling that, but you got invited to Foundation, so you want to go to Foundation and then you want to put some stuff on Rarible, I recommend it. Give it a try. It's nice to have a diverse portfolio. So each one has their pros and cons. And that's just up to you as an artist to figure out how you want to do it. Just like when you work with a gallery. Every, every, everything in life has pros and cons. So make sure you just research and educate yourself on it. And those are the open, open NFT platforms. That means no matter who you are, everyone in this room can click on those. You can mint your NFTs on that place. That's just a small list of them. There are always more out there. If you have questions about, yo, I never heard of this NFT marketplace. Can you just tell me if it's legit? I'm always here for you for that because you never want to connect your wallet to like a bunch of sketchy stuff. So make sure that you know it's actually the, the real OpenSea and it's the actual real OpenSea and it has a full uh, URL and someone didn't buy OpenSea.cash. And it's like, oh, it said OpenSea. So I just clicked on it and they just use it to like get all your tokens. So be safe, always double check things and make sure you're in the right place. Any questions about open platforms? Awesome. You all are doing an amazing job. I appreciate you all. Let me check. Uh, sweet. So they were saying rare, uh, they started with Rarible last year. It's a mess, but it's, it's going a lot. It got a lot going on for it. Um, so you earn rare coins for buying and selling. I think that's great. You want to make sure you reward your collectors and the sellers. Unique One has something similar to that. Um, so I believe it should be the standard. Everyone isn't doing it, but 
I know people, I don't know about Rarible because I didn't do them exactly, but with Unique One, I know people who are making more money and they didn't even sell an NFT. They were getting rewarded just for being a part of the marketplace and they made more money than what they were listing the pieces for, just for minting pieces. So if you get in early on a, on a site and they offer rewards and tokens and things like that, it's worth giving it a shot. They like a small startup business and they have a marketing budget. So they want to do these good things. So they have money to play with. Um, it's just about if you're doing research and you get them early, then it's a lot of benefits to it. We start working with Unique One maybe a month or two after their rollout. So when we start minting pieces and doing things with them, there wasn't a lot of people um, attempting to do things with them. So they're, they're all open to it. Um, if you have any questions about these platforms, I recommend hitting them up on Telegram, Discord, Twitter. Um, these are ways they can become accessible, accessible to you. And everyone, if you're getting into the entity space, you should have all three of those. You should have a Twitter, even if you don't use it, it's very big into the space. You should have a, a Clubhouse account. Um, that's very important. It's just building community, even though it's on the internet and the metaverse. Um, connections are important. Sometimes not what you know, but who you know. And you just being in, a, in the right room with some people, they're like, oh man, I, I really love your energy. I, I love the way you talk and you speak and you speak with kindness and love. Uh, I'm gonna give you this opportunity. So make sure y'all always um, have Telegram, Discord, Twitter, and Clubhouse. I believe are essential. Um, for the regular art world, Instagram is very important, but really not for NFTs. Um, I, since I focus my life on, uh, on NFTs, I've been focused on just um, Twitter versus Instagram. I just started posting things again like a couple of days ago. So I'm gonna go on to like the, the closed platforms now. And the difference between the open and the close is just um, whether you can access it right away, right? 100%. So closed NFT platforms foundation um, is a cool one. I like that one. Um, an artist uh, named Rasheed is go by JVN Crow on, uh, on Instagram and Twitter. He started off on foundation. Um, the piece that he's been doing and foundation is a platform where you're invited by an artist um and they invite other artists so it's really like an artist community um so we can click on foundation just so we can see what those are like i don't have any foundation invites unfortunately um but um someone in this room or someone on club also twitter um uh, might have some of those available for you taking a little time to load but that's the current bit that they got going on right now a little bit over one eth and got a cool piece of art right there so it's really cool um, yeah, I like the artwork on Foundation. I think they do, it's a great job and I like their theme and it's their niche. They were the first person to do like invite by other artists. So big shout out to them. Super Rare is gonna be the, the king of all kings with these NFT marketplaces. I know some really good artists um, who haven't even been accepted. They just have a really big long wait line because there's a lot of people trying to get into that space and they just released a token also, um, which is doing really good. So the great thing about Super Rare, um, a, lot of, a lot of the OGs who are into NFT space, they're on Super Rare and they were on there before they started being more curated and it was a closed platform. Um, so they rewarded all these artists, everyone who was on their site, who sold a piece, who bought a piece, they rewarded them with their tokens. Artists received like 20K to about 100K in this token and it changed a lot of artists' lives. So um, I like Super Rare. Um, I appreciate what they've done for the community. Um, Annie has a profo uh, profile on there under IRL Art, and she has a lot of her pieces. And she's even helped her friends out and uploaded their artwork because they couldn't get into Super Rare. Um, so there is ways that, ways that you can get in there. Um, even if you know someone and they want to upload a piece and they can hook you up and give you the money afterwards. But I recommend like creating your own account and then you doing it your own. Um, and definitely apply for Super Rare but I want to hold your breath that you're going to get in as soon as you want to get in. Um, it might be a three month process. It might be a three year process, um, but super rare is a uh, crema de la creme. And if you can get on there, definitely do it. And if you can't get on there, buy some tokens and be a part of their community and really reap the benefits. Known Orange is going to be another site and uh, I'm not going to go too in depth with these. I'm just going to show you the sites and you can always click on them and do more research on your own. 
Um, but as you kind of see, a lot of these start to look the same after a while. Maker Place is another one. And I go on these websites as a curator just to see the current work that's out there, um, seeing if there are any like artists who I want to collaborate with, seeing what the current trends are, seeing what's selling. Um, so it's nice to even go on these websites, even if you're not buying anything, even if you're not selling anything, just to see what's out there in the world. Um, it's like going to an art gallery for me. Um, so I always check on these websites, see different artists, follow them on Twitter, follow them on Instagram, um, see who bought their pieces, see what OX address is from. Then I'm following that OX address to figure out what type of artwork they like um, and find trends and things like that. So if you want to do research and you want to get nerdy with it, um, definitely check these out. Just another closed platform. If you have any questions about these, let me know. But uh, this is like a basic class. So most of these websites, I want to recommend start off with the open platform websites. So I think those are best. This is a way to fund your mint. So this is Mint Fund, a community-owned and funded initiative helping BIPOC and LGBTQIA plus crypto creators mint NFTs. Um, so you can contribute to the fund or you can apply as a partner. They have frequently asked questions. Uh, Twitter, as you said, Twitter is very important. So you want to make sure like anything you want to follow, make sure you follow them on Twitter. So gas fees are could be expensive. Minting can be expensive, but never let I don't have a hundred dollars to actually miss something. I can't take care of the gas fees. Never let that be what stop you from getting into the space. Um, it's very important to always keep striving. Even if you see like, yo, this isn't working out. I can't figure it out. My internet just stopped working. Like my laptop is giving me a pain. Like whatever it is, like don't let it stop you from getting into the space. If you don't have the gas fees, whatever it is, like do research, but also hit us up and be like, hey, I ain't got money to pay my gas fee. Do you have any solutions or any ideas? I can send you a few websites or I might tell you do it on a different network or whatever it may be. There's always a way to go around it. It's a very supportive community and the people in the community, they want to see more artists get into it. Um, so there's definitely ways to go about anything that you want to do in the space. Never be scared. Never feel like there's not an opportunity. Um, it might not be an opportunity you know about, but there's definitely opportunities out there for everyone. I'm going to check a question. Um, let me check. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's like called gas station or gas something. I'm gonna Google it really fast. Yeah, and we are we're at, um, about the 15 minute mark or a little bit over. So this is definitely a time for question and answer. So if anybody has any kind of questions that he, they want to ask Rob, um, feel free to put it in the chat or um, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we can talk on mic. Absolutely. Feel free to ask me any questions. I, thank you for helping me break this up. So I'm just not talking for hours straight. <laughs> but, um, I just put it in there, something that ETH gas station that can help you find gas prices. Let's see. Cool, well actually, if you, would you mind giving like a really high level overview of just like the steps in minting, like just like five steps, like here is where you start, here is where you end maybe, um, just so we can write it down, or at least I know I will. <laughs> um, hold on, there's our team. Let, let's, let me ask this question. Do you have to build an audience to sell an NFT or are they easy to sell without an audience? Um, I wouldn't say they're easy to sell without an audience, um, but I've seen people do without an audience. Um, actually, the piece behind me to the right is a comic book. Um, Justine, um, she's a creator. She created a comic book. She paid an illustrator to do it. I told her that she should tokenize her comic book. And she took that image and she made that the cover. But every time someone bought that, NFT, it came with a physical copy of her comic book. She didn't have an art. She didn't do anything. That's so cool. Before, um, but she sold two NFTs as soon as she mentioned them. And it was people who saw it. It was like, yo, that's tight. I want it. Click buy. And it was that simple. Um, and she didn't have, hasn't sold any more since then because she didn't have an audience and she hasn't been consistent in the space. But people can make sales that fast. People like your work. Once you're into the space, they can click buy it and be gone. 
Um, I believe most people have an audience. If you're an artist and you have someone who likes your art, it is essential that you take your current collectors and you build them up. They don't know about NFTs. They've only bought your art with cash or a credit or debit card. You want to teach them and grow your collectors and like bring them on this journey with you. And I'm willing to help anyone in this room, their collectors. If like, yo, I have a collector who want to buy NFT from me, but they have no idea what to do. I barely can like tell them what to do. They can set up a call with me. I will help them download their MetaMask. I will help them set up their Coinbase, your Ethereum in there. And then I will make sure they have the link to buy your piece. I don't need any cut, any residuals. I just want to build more people into the space. Um, but it's important that you get on social media and you start telling your friends, hey, I'm getting to the NFT space. Have you heard about it? Have this intrigued you? Let's have a conversation. This is the benefits, how it's going to benefit you as a collector. You're able to see like my value. You're investing in me. You want to see my, my growth. You want to see that my pieces aren't just a hundred dollar piece anymore. My pieces are now a thousand dollar pieces. So collectors, you want to make sure you give them some type of benefit why they want to go through these three extra steps. And a lot of people who are buying art, they are in a comfortable position. They have invested in other things. And sometimes they've already invested in cryptocurrency but their cryptocurrency is just sitting in their wallet. They didn't know that they can buy art with it. And it's not just like buying art. It's just like staking your, um, your crypto. It's like holding your crypto somewhere. And then as that item rises in price, then the value goes up too. So it's not even like you're selling off your crypto. It's just like holding it for you. And that's how I like to explain it to them. Um, and oh, then we're going to talk about how to mint NFTs. So... Let's see, the best way to, in a few steps, let me see if I can just do it. Give me one second. So I'm going to share my screen. So I'm in MetaMask. I'm going to be in an ETH marketplace. And what you would do is you would just, I need to connect my wallet first. Connect wallet. MetaMask, and there we go. Then we click create. If you want, have a one of one, like if you want only one addition to be out there, like if you do an original canvas, that's that one piece, you're not gonna make prints of it. That is what a single would be. If it's multiple, let's say if you come out with a digital image, but you make hundred prints and you're gonna sell all hundred of those, that's what a multiple would be. So we're gonna start off with single. You can choose your file, photo library, um, albums, I'm gonna, here we go, Twitter. So a picture of Drake and it's not my content, so don't wanna do this, but you upload it. Um, you can put it in a collection or you can just put it on unique one. You can type in a name, Drake. Description, Drake. You can put your royalties, 10, 20, 30. I'm gonna up mine's at 30. I recommend finding somewhere in the middle, um, especially when you just start your journey. You have different categories, IRL art, art, animation, MAGA, mean, training cards. I'm gonna click IRL art. You can put the dimensions. If people are gonna like project these or have it anywhere, it's good to let them know the dimension that this file is coming in. That way they can display it properly. You can put on sale, you can put on auction, and then you just press create. And that's it. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to pay gas fees and 
and mint something that's not mine. But that's pretty much it. There's a few more steps after that. You just verifying it, pressing OK. And there is a way to, there's like a test network that I'll have to get that information from Annie. Um, but there is a way to go through the motions without actually doing it. Um, but it's just a few steps. I could have minted that piece that easy. If that took it a few seconds, I would have to confirm it and about three other buttons. But uh, Annie just said, ring could be network. So that's where you can like go practice and you can like go through the motions of actually trying out to mint an NFT while actually doing it. And I see we got some questions in there. So I'm gonna answer those. I wanna say the royalty percentage keep people from purchasing, um, but it could if you're gonna receive there's the original sale and then someone else another piece if i'm if i'm deciding if i want to buy these two pieces of artwork one creator is saying they need 30 percent another creator saying they need 10 percent i'm like okay well that's an extra 20 percent for me for my pocket if i buy this other piece of artwork so i'm gonna lean on that side so that could be one thing as a collector that will go through their brain um, will it determine them if your artwork is better i will buy the one that's okay they have a higher percentage but like I don't know why they need it, or it's not for me to even question. I, I want that artwork, I'm gonna buy it. But if you're comparing apples to apples, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go with this one because it's cheaper. Some people are like, I love a deal. I love buying stuff on clearance and things like that. So if I can ever save some money, then that's what I'm gonna do. So I just like for you people to be conscious of that. A lot of people, when they see that, I'm like, oh, I'm going for 30%. Why would not I take as much money as possible? And it's because a collector might be looking through and they're determining between the five pieces, which ones they want. They're like, okay, I'm gonna cut this down to people who only want 20% because 30% is the max and kind of at the higher end. So that's the, that's the only thing that might deter. It. I hope that answered your question. I forgot who waxed it. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions about minting pieces and, and how to go through the process? It's super easy. Yes, I have a question. So just to make sure I get this. Hey, Rob. Hey. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm eating. Okay, so to make sure I understand what minting is, it's taking an NFT and putting it in the marketplace with a wallet, kind of? It's putting it on the blockchain. Put it on the blockchain. Okay. Minting is, um, is like, it's creating a token. And I'm not exactly sure why they call it minting. Uh, maybe a mint is what makes coins and stuff like that um, yeah but, but it's just it's going through the process of putting it on the blockchain so okay. you take your artwork and when you like give it that certificate of authenticity that's what minting is got it that's helpful thank you absolutely and thank you for um letting me know that it's like minting a coin um it makes sense um a lot of these tech words and things that people use in the space um sometimes they it doesn't make sense, but as you get into it, like aping in is like something that people really don't say in the real world, but it just means like you're going full in, like, oh, I'm into this. So there's always a different terminology. Um, can you mint videos and uh, video slash long videos? Yes, like Annie said, different platforms allow different file sizes, but yes, MP4s are available on almost every platform. And I was just in a Twitter spaces with musicians about rappers, there is one platform, which I didn't write down, that can do like full music videos. And, and really everyone's like, yeah, that's the only one that's gonna give you like three minutes to put like a whole video on there. Um, I will have to look that up and find out what it is, um, but I'm sure a couple of Googles, um, anyone can find it out, but feel free to hit me up if that's something that you wanna know, Aki, um, to get that. There we go. Trap House is coming through, appreciate you. Um, so definitely go check that out. They put that in the chat um, and they're going to let you do full videos. And that's, that's a form, especially with black creatives. Um, it's some, that's why I always like intertwine music into the things that I do. For me growing up, most black creatives, they didn't want to be painters and stuff like that when they were growing up. They didn't even know about that. They just wanted to be athletes or they want to be entertainers. I want to be a hooper. I want to be a rapper. Um, so I believe it's very important to make sure that we offer our natural form of self-expression as Black people. As the kids growing up, they're rapping and things like that. They're imitating things that they see. 
um, that we offer them a form of self-expression into this NFT space. So I'm glad that there's opportunities where you can put a whole music video out there because that's one way that I, I take in art. I, I watch music videos. I'm going to read some more things off the chat. Uh, and he says some people do like short videos and have unlockable that is a full video um that would benefit you in several ways like if you go on unique one or if you go on some of these other platforms that aren't going to let you do that full file size but that's where your community is then it's good to make it a unlockable content or once they buy the nft you give them like a sample then they get the full video um They said, uh, Trap House said, NFTs all last year supplement our art income because studio was locked. See, that's great, man. The NFT space has been very beneficial. Um, it's been taking care of all my bills and stuff for like the last six months. So I appreciate this space. And I'm glad that I, I took that leap of faith and I started educating myself and, and being in Rome just like now. Um, six months ago, I was in this room listening. And now I'm, I'm really surprised that I'm actually speaking and trying to tell people uh, and I am telling people about this space. It's just amazing how fast it can move. A lot of people talk in the NFT space. Like one day is like one a week in the NFT space. So things move really fast. Um, so we're just excited on this journey. Anybody else got any other questions? I can keep going over the research doc because it's a lot of cool things I want to get to. I know we got that Q&A, but it's a few more things I want to cover. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and just hit a few of my favorites. So we have 30 minutes for Q and a, and we have a bunch of other smart people in here, like trap house, Annie, who can, we can all answer these questions together. Cause it's a community. We all it's decentralized, it's open source. Like we all want to share this information. We all want to collaborate and not be gatekeepers and hoard this information away. Let's go back. There we go. So Educational resources, um, Annie has put a plethora of those on there. Um, Gitcoin is something I'm a big fan of. Annie will be able to talk more about that. Um, but it's like a Kickstarter, but in like the crypto world. Um, she has been doing a lot of stuff on Gitcoin and we received a lot of funding. Someone gave us $4,000 and they're able to do like certain type of matching. And I don't know all the ins and out of it, um, but if we have a little bit of time and anyone has any questions, um, Annie can speak about it or yeah. I can always hit Annie up at IRL art underscore underscore. Um, and she can let you know more about Gitcoin, Bright ID, things like that. Um, Call for Artists, Sevens has one. Audius has one that I really like. I Three people have got approved for this. I'm going to click on it just to see the grant process. Um, who is receiving the grant? You just put your name or entity, email, Discord name, your audience profile. You just download the app. It's on the iOS and the Google Play Store. You let them know what the grant is for. For IRL Art, we want to pay DJs at our NFT gallery. Um, for someone else, they want to do a VR video, music video. For our brand with Endgame, he wants to have live performance at this event, then take that audio and then upload it on audience. So no matter what you want to do, there are ways, there's some way to do it. Um, tokens, they'll give you, um, they drop that down. It's 1,500 audio tokens now, um, which is probably about like $5,000, $4,000. Um, and it's a nice way to get started. If you want to do something creative in an audio sphere, then you should definitely fill this out. If address, MetaMask is preferred. That's our, a lot of people's favorite one. Give them a breakdown how the grant is spent. You can give them a referral. Is there anyone else working on this project with you? And anything else you need to know, you click submit and that's it. Take 30 minutes max. And you just filled out a grant and they might email you and say like, yo, you got approved. Uh, it's just about trying, going through the few steps. Everyone on this call is a creative in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So I know you all have great ideas. Um, you got to shoot those shots, though. Um, ways to earn passive income. We're really not going to talk about those, but you should definitely check those out. Uh, what I want to talk about is this is software for artists. That's good to cover. So if you want to build a free virtual space, Crypto Voxel, where you can have your own gallery, um, Somnia Space. Blender is if you want to do 3D artwork and like uh, like Cinema 4D and things of that nature, check out Blender. It's free. And there's other different ways. Um, Swanson, he's great. He has 3D graphics and videos that you can use. A Black creative. Um, he's like Beeple, but better. Um, virtual worlds that you can do stuff in. 
And I'm looking for the DAOs. Okay, there we go. Um, I guess DAOs aren't on here. There we go. Uh, so, Unique One, Friends of Benefits, Panavala, Museum of Crypto Art. We just did an exhibit with them. Audius, Metafactory, Giveth. These, all these right here that you're going to see. Um, Unique One is a website that we're already just at. That's why I love them because they have a DAO that actually been giving us funding. Museum of Crypto Art, they've been collecting pieces since around 2019. They probably have like the first 100 NFT artists in their collection. Um, and they just supported one of our events. So you can always hit up one of these DAOs. You can buy some of their tokens. And that's how you, you can buy some of their tokens to get in their community. Once you have a token, even if you have one, you're now a part of their community. You can put in a proposal. You can also vote on other proposals. Um, so I recommend like taking some Ethereum and then buying into some of these communities. Um, some communities like Friends of Benefits, you need a certain amount to get into their Discord to do X, Y, and Z. But for the most part, you be a part of their community. Once you're a part of that community, you have a say so in what they do in the community. And you can say, hey, I'm a part of this community. I think we should do this event that I have in mind. We're gonna do X, Y, and Z. And y'all should give me some money for it. And they might say, yo, that's a very selfish idea. As a collective, every single member of the community, they might say no. But if it's something genuine out the out your heart, you feel like, like it's something good where both ends can receive something on it, then they'll say yeah. And how it will benefit the DAO is it'll make their token go up. Everyone in the community would then benefit from that. Because you did when you did your event, the token was at one dollar. Your event was so popping, everyone knew about it. All your friends bought NFTs, they bought tokens. Now that token is now at ten dollars. Now the community fucking loves you. They're like, yeah, whatever they want to do, we're gonna vote yes on it because they're actually building uh, building value for this community. Uh, so it's very important to make sure y'all contact DAOs. DAOs have paid for our gallery. DAOs have paid our rent. Uh, DAOs have bought us new computers. Like DAOs have really taken care of us, and they are the future. Just like NFT is really trending right now, you're gonna hear a lot more about DAOs within the next coming years. So and what it, what exactly is a DAO? A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. So it's like a company or a brand. It's a decentralized organization, autonomous because it's an OX address. It's not saying it's like Bill Myers on the OX address. It's just an OX address. You don't know like who put in that proposal, who voted yes or no, it's autonomous. So think of, uh, for most things, there's like a board of directors or there's your manager. And they have that one say so. If they say so, that just it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it not the supervisor, not the uh, GM, not nothing. Um, but if it's, a, if it's a DAO, decentralized autonomous organization, then everyone has a say so. So everyone in that community has a say so what goes on. So when that money's being spent, when the money's being allocated, different ideas and things like that, everyone has a say so, which I think is great. Um, Cause I've been a part of a lot of organizations and things like that. And sometimes I couldn't speak up. I was like, that's outside my payroll. Like that's Jim. He handles all the stuff like that. But I always had like something I want to throw in. I was like, yo, that's not right. They shouldn't be doing that. Um, but if that one person think that, yo, this is what I'm doing. I'm an asshole. I'm going to do this because I'm in a grumpy mood. That's not right. So that's what the overall space is about. It's about decentralized, no gatekeepers. It should be open to everyone. Uh, open source information is very hippie-ish and very loving, but I believe that's the way things should be. Things should be open. And like we're doing here, um, we have a whole research doc and we could keep that just internally. We don't have to tell anyone about proposals or DAOs or any of this information. And we can keep getting money from them constantly. Um, but that's not what we're about. That's not what the community is about. So you have to practice what you preach. You have to actually like, you have to have it in your heart. You don't have to, um, but I think people will like smell that out. When you got love in your heart and you really care, you care about this community, you care about other artists, like, most of y'all have been a struggling artist. Yeah, I know what it's like. Like, yo, I haven't sold a piece, but this is what I want to do. This makes me happy. We all have those like feelings and we understand. So this community is like coming together and really bridging those gaps and, and able to help people and benefit people um, like never before. Sweet, that's all I'm gonna go over on the research doc. Uh, I'm gonna open up for Q and A. Y'all have that research doc where y'all can go over and y'all can always reach out to us. Um, I'm gonna read a few things in the chat just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, uh, 
Uh, that was on Gitcoin. It's like GoFundMe, but they partner with different crypto communities to do matching uh, for the funds you raise. Um, so it's crazy that other other communities will also say, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to match that. I'm going to add more money on top of that. So it's really great. And one thing I like about it, they really don't base it off of how much money you raise. They base it, they base some of it off of how many people participate. So if one person donates a thousand dollars, sometimes it's even more impactful if a thousand people donate a dollar because it's about the engagement, people being involved. So they really do like some some futuristic stuff and, and even crowdfunding that I didn't even think was possible. And that's a great thing about this space. They're not uh, complacent, like Kickstarter and GoFundMe, like they got their standard operating procedure. It's probably never going to change. But uh, Gitcoin, they're doing cool stuff like, yo, if you just got a bunch of people because your community, they're struggling. Ain't nobody got a thousand dollars to give you, but you got a bunch of friends and everyone got a dollar. So that holds strength. So I really like Gitcoin. And he wants to let everyone know that IRA DAO is coming soon. So make sure y'all y'all stay, stay in contact. Y'all reach out to us because we'll have a DAO where we can uh, provide funding for creative projects. Um, everything that we do, we'll leave it out there and open. And, and we're very passionate, community oriented. And I hope that comes across and we're speaking the things that we do. So we want to have people in the DAO. We have worked with over 2,000 artists in real life. And the metaverse is probably like probably like a thousand, probably somewhere around that. Annie can correct me. Um, but we work with a lot of artists. We have a lot of relationships and we want to share this information. So make sure y'all hit us up and, um, and yeah, we'll do it. Dow thought the future business pretty wild. Okay. I thought that was a coin. Um, sweet. Those are all the questions um, in the chat. Does anyone has any other questions that they want to ask or ideas they want to go over anything like that? Yes, Aki. So, okay, so I have an idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think I just didn't even know about the DAO. So when you said that, it kind of just sparked something. Um, but I'm starting something called the People for President. And it's just kind of like, it's morphing, but basically I want it to be like the People's Campaign for President. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of like sparked this idea of like, the collective because I just feel like that's like the, the new wave the conversation that's going on and like art and with business it's just more about like the collective so even when it comes to politics like how can we collectively kind of come together but I think it would be kind of cool as a DAO um, or I don't know I don't know just wanting to get thoughts about that uh, absolutely uh, it's definitely something that you can do. It can become a DAO. Uh, with DAOs, DAOs are a new thing and they're not like the easiest thing to set up and organize. And so, but you can start taking a proper step to create a DAO. Annie has a lot of information and she's currently going through the process. So I don't know exactly how to set up a DAO, but I can put a link in the chat um, of MCON to say recap. And MCON was a conference for DAOs. And I think just reading that and going through those, um, let's see if I can find it. Going through those, some of those chats, you can really benefit just by learning about DAOs. Give me one second, I'm gonna put that in the chat for everyone to see. And I like, even when I'm just chilling and I'm just cleaning up the house, I'll put on like one of these conversations from DAOs and I'll just let it play in the background. And until I know everything about it, I'm gonna keep researching them. And until I'm able to speak about them, like when I'm asked these questions, I'm gonna keep doing research on them. Um, but I definitely know they are the future. A lot of people are investing a lot of time and energy into them. And there goes, fuck, I keep DMing people. Sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Sorry for cussing. That's to everyone. There we go. So I just put that in the chat. That's gonna be, uh, they have it on YouTube, but that goes to their Twitter. And then you'll be able to like, just drop down and look at everything. Did that answer your question, Aki? Yeah, thank you so much. Sure. And Annie said that PFP DAO C Club offers a program for people to learn and set up DAOs. And she put that in there. 
sweet. Um, so definitely ways to start DAOs and people are specialized in that. Um, so I think that's exciting. People for president, I like that. PFP is a, a current acronym used for like profile pictures. Um, so I think you can run with that and you can like make something super cool that already have like that, uh, that trendy acronym going for it. So did you have another question, Aki? Or is that just still your hand raised from the previous one? I'm good, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions or just wanna go over general ideas? Um, you wanna introduce yourself, let us know about your art. In the meantime, if someone raise their hand, I'll let y'all know about the gallery that I'm curating in December that I am looking for artists for. Uh, we're gonna be partnering with a company called Reactions. Reactions is providing something new to the NFT space. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people use Facebook. Facebook has a thing where you can, once you see a picture, you can thumbs up, thumbs down, heart it, laugh, cry. You can show the reactions that this uh, image created for you. So they're gonna be creating that for NFTs. Um, so we're hoping in theory, you'll be able to boost some of the sales. People give it a thumbs up, people give it a hard eye, and it really draws attention and, and gives that extra credibility that um, some NFTs need to like, like go a little bit further. So we're gonna be curating the gallery in Denver. Um, and we're also gonna have a, a place in the metaverse. Um, but that's, we're gonna be teaming up with reactions. We're gonna be teaming up with another platform and bring it all together. But the theme is gonna be viral. Um, a lot of people have these viral moments but they don't know how to capitalize on them. They, their income and what they receive from it is like a retweets and maybe a little bit of clout. Um, sometimes if you do it properly, you can do a few club appearances, you can do a few promos on Twitter, you can um, and just do a few shout outs or something like that. Um, but for most of the time you create this content, you went viral, you get lucky if you make it to Ellen or something like that where you can really profit off of it. But a lot of times the creators, they just went viral, especially on, on Black Twitter, which I spend a lot of time, there's so much stuff that I just laugh at. I think it's hilarious. I think people can be comics, but there's just people who just got an iPhone and they made something. People loved it, but they got still go to that nine to five. They still stand in the hood. They're still living in a food desert. These are still things that they're currently going through. And what to some people might think it's only a meme or just a gif or something like that. That's a simple way to think of it. That's a form of self-expression. Um, that's all art is. Art is a form of self-expression. It can be a pain, it can be a, uh, a JPEG, it can be food, it can be a GIF, it can be a viral video, it can be a tweet. These are ways that you express yourself, which makes it art. So I wanna make sure that we always, and this is the current generation, this is their form of self-expression, is by making a meme or is by making a TikTok dance. These are the way that our young creators are expressing themselves. So we wanna make sure we give them opportunities and we onboard them in this space and let them know like, hey, these are ways that you can capitalize off that gift that you have. Um, people around you might not see it as a gift, but me as a curator, I see this as a gift. I see this as art and they're expressing yourself. And it's something that we all have enjoyed. We all probably have like a favorite meme or a favorite viral moment that brings joy to your heart. Um, whether it's like Swaggy P doing his little head sideways, like he's really confused. Or when it's Terrio, he's like, ooh, kill him. Or it's like the little girl who's like, do it for the vine. I ain't gonna do it. It's like so many of these little things, like, yo, that just made me smile just like thinking about it. Those are the people we really wanna encourage and get into this space. So I'm gonna be reaching out to a few content creators and trying to onboard them so they can tokenize their piece. But how this can benefit artists is we're gonna be doing artist rendition of these viral moments. So you're gonna be able to do whatever your viral, favorite viral moment is. You can create an image, you can create a GIF, you can create some type of artwork and have it represent this. Um, and we'll have a very immersive um, things, um, own way of going about it. I don't wanna give all the way all my secrets and stuff, but that's how the artists can get involved. Then me as a curator, I'm gonna create some really immersive experiential ways that you can experience once you walk in the gallery. Um, and then we're also gonna have a space in the metaverse. I'm focusing on in real life exhibits because it's important to build these collectors up. We have a gallery in Rhino Art District, which is the most popular art district in Colorado. Um, and a lot of these people are used to buying physical, tangible pieces. The people who have expandable income, they are older, they're, they have money in their account, 
um, but they don't know anything about NFTs. They don't have a wallet. So when they walk into the space, I'm able to onboard them and teach them about NFTs, answer their questions. They can download a wallet. I can tell them about the Coinbase. So this is how we're partnering and helping building sales. Um, that's for our digital clients, because anyone who really is into NFTs, they can put on an Oculus Rift, they can click on a button, and they'll just buy what they want there. Um, but this world isn't just there yet, where newer artists and up and coming artists can just depend on people online to buy the artwork. Like someone asks, do you need an audience? Audience definitely helps. And that's what we're doing in real life. We're taking the physical audience that walks into our space and we're like, yo, this is an NFT. And most people who walk into the guy are like, yo, I thought NFT is just like online. I thought it was just like digital stuff. It's like, nope, it's this statue right here. This mural is an NFT. This jersey is an NFT. Everything you see is an NFT around you. And we make it more accessible and approachable for the, the average consumer. And then that's all I have about the show. If you want to be involved in the show, feel free to hit me up um, via Twitter, Instagram, or whatever is easier for you. Uh, my Instagram is still art, not drugs. Um, but you can also hit us on the IRL account. Um, that's something that we all manage. Um, so make sure y'all reach out to me, send me a message here, whatever it is for you, but I would love to work with all artists all across the world. Uh, we can all come together and create something special. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Rob, for everything that you just said and for being here. I can honestly say that my mind is blown and I'm trying to <laughs> uh, internalize everything that you've said. Um, but I will I'll let uh, people have like maybe one or two questions and then um, we will sign off. And if you're like me, I think I'm probably going to need to watch this one more time to be able to get all the information. So like I said before, this is being recorded and we will be uploading it to our YouTube next week. Um, if you are interested in rewatching all of the gems that Rob and, and Annie have dropped for us. And Trap House. Trap House has been coming through. And Trap chat. House, true. So true. I'm, I'm going to come through and, and give them a follow on social media. We should definitely like collaborate and just have a discussion. I love like, I believe knowledge is the best gift that you can give someone. So anyone who have knowledge in this space, I have information in this space, uh, no matter if you think I already knew it or not, let's talk. Let's just have conversation. Let's break bread with each other and figure out how we can all help each other and grow. Um, everyone in this room knows something. And um, about something that I don't know about. Everyone has their specialty. Um, so I believe if we all share that information with each other. It can be something super special. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll be hitting you up for sure. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to it. Any questions? How about everybody introduce yourself before we leave so we know who got on the phone? I know about three or four people online. And they're amazing artists and amazing creatives. And your next collector might be in this very room. So I would love if we can just go around and do some introductions. I'm like looking at black screens. I'll go. Hi, everybody. My name is Juanine. I am a multimedia artist uh, from through Redline. And I just recently met my, Rob. And I feel like I finally have a community for all of my digital art that I've been like stowing away because I didn't feel like I had a place for it. So I'm so excited um, to get my work out there and to a community that can actually appreciate what I do. So thank you so much, Rob. This was a lot of information to take in. I was many times while my camera was off, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, but I know I'm gonna have to like, just go over and keep attending meetings and things like this to get it because I can see and feel this is the way to go. And especially since this is just, my place in the art world. So thanks. Absolutely. Uh, amazing artist. Met her maybe yesterday. I think it was our first day meeting each other. And it was like this other NFT thing in town that I told her about and she came to it and she showed me her digital art. I'm like, holy shit, I was taken aback because whenever I see a black woman, I'm gonna help you regardless. Like I don't even care what your art looks like. You're a black woman, like come on, like any of my information I got is yours. Um but then I saw her artwork and I was like, holy shit, you're already doing like the stuff that's like currently trending in the space, the stuff that are selling for multiple Ethereum, she's doing it. So everyone should check out her artwork. She's an amazing artist. And like when she dropped her Genesis NFT, I'm gonna try to snatch it. So like I recommend as a curator and a collector, um, I think she's gonna do really good in the space. So everyone check her out. Anyone else wanna go next and introduce herself? I can go next. Um, yeah. Um, yes. 
Um, <laughs> I am a collage, analog collage artist. In layman terms, I cut people's faces up and play in glue. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, Rob, I'm really, I'm so proud of you. I am. And like you as well, Annie. And so you guys really thank you. I definitely just text you, Rob. So make sure you text me back. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, but yeah, like I had met Rob earlier and Annie this year and I, uh, I sold my first five art pieces in the Black Love Gallery show um, in February, thanks to Rob and Annie. So I'm excited to get into the NFT world. Um, and the crazy thing is, Rob, you know how I was telling you about Art Basel. Um, my silo is actually doing all NFT things. So I'm actually really excited to like dive in and like, uh, yeah, I know, Annie, it's crazy. I know we out here be straight, no. But <laughs> so I'm really excited to be talking to you guys um, about it and just like going through that whole process. And the cool thing, the whole silo is all black women. So uh, yeah. So I'm excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. So thank you again. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for the kind words. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, we, we worked together in February. We did a Black History Month exhibit and we were intertwining the actual tangible artwork with NFTs in a gallery. Um, Yaz brought five pieces through. We're all, I remember it was me, Annie, and Alex from uh, the person who put together the Ryan O'Meara program. And we're figuring out the artists that we also, that was the main thing. We're mainly there to do murals. And then it was like, yeah, I want a gallery space. I was like, heck yeah, give it to us. Um, but we're gonna do murals and we wanted Yaz to do a mural, but she wasn't there yet. But she had the five pieces in the gallery, sold all those five pieces and we did a mural workshop. And it was like, yo, you should like do murals. You should figure it out. And she did figure it out. And now she's a full-time artist doing murals all across the city. Like everyone's like booking her up. Everyone wants to do shows with her. And she's just like killing it. So I'm excited for her NFT journey. Her trajectory is amazing. She's been on a hot streak since February. And I don't see her cooling down in time in the next 10 years. So make sure y'all check out Yaz's yeah, artwork. Um, that's someone else. Like when they drop their Genesis pieces, these are the pieces that I want to collect. Cause I believe in these artists and I believe they're going to succeed. So um, just like Beeple piece that we, Annie tokenized in 2020, originally sold for $200 and the other one, $800. Now they're multi-million dollar pieces. So make sure you, you buy the artists that you believe in. So even in this room are a lot of great artists. So make sure y'all check them out. Anyone else want to, uh, I know we only had a few more minutes. So if I, you need to cut me off, go ahead and in the convo. But if anyone else want to introduce yourself, feel free. I love to get to know other people. Say hey, hey, I'm Aisha Renee. Um, <laughs> I am basically now mostly um, painting. I started my art journey in graphic design. So I am really, really excited. Like I spoke to Rob about um, before getting all of the designs that I've done in graphic, um, in the graphic space and putting them into NFT, the NFT space. So this has been a lot of information that makes me a lot less cloudy about the like minting process and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I'm about to do this and I'm excited. Thank you. So excited for you. I'm excited for you to be in the space. I appreciate you supporting me in the Black Love Real Festival and, and everything on since then. Um, I'm excited for your pieces too. And it blew me away when you told me you're like a graphic designer. Like, you already understand the digital world and a great thing because you're already a part of the digital community um, as a graphic designer. It's people in this space who are like, yo, I was a graphic designer. Yeah, I invested in Bitcoin or Ethereum like five, six years ago. So this $500 that I invested originally is now like 50K. So I still look at it as it's still like $500. So you can tell that story, let people know that like, yo, I'm a graphic designer, I'm in this space. Like I care about this community. And people are gonna flock and really show you a lot of love and attention because you're already a part of their community. Um, they just haven't known yet because you haven't put any pieces out there. So definitely let your story be told. Let this tech community know that you're doing stuff in this space and that you've been doing stuff in the tech space. Um, so you're not just coming as a money grab. You just like really found your home and you found your tribe that can really appreciate your art in its natural format. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna do it and you get, and we got your back so yeah you, good. you got a whole team around you 
I appreciate it. Hey, Annie. <laughs> uh, anybody hey. else? <laughs> I'm over here in like a hoodie because it's cold in Denver it's and I'm, cold. I'm in like pajama mode. I'm so proud of you, Rob, though. And it's so nice to see all of y'all and so excited to be on this journey together. NFTs have totally changed my life. And I think, you know, as a digital artist, it was just so cool to like sell my art in its native form because I never wanted to make prints. Um felt like just it took the life out of the art or something so for me that was like my original thought with it and was like how cool and it just keeps growing and I think like it's just a really experimental space we're still super early so I don't think you're like behind or anything and it's just going to keep getting crazier and cooler so <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you all for attending. Um, I, I, if you don't know um, myself, my name is Tatiana Rice and I am the founder of Black Art House. Um, we're a social enterprise just dedicated to increasing access for Black artists in a lot of different spaces, but mostly physical, um, which is why we're hosting this uh, specific seminar with Rob and, and his team um, in exploring different ways for Black artists to be able to better support their careers, explore new opportunities, things like that. So um, if you're at all interested in us and you are um, liking, you still do like your physical artwork as well. Um, we have a online marketplace to sell your physical works um, as well as doing in-person exhibitions, which we have an open call for as well. Um, although I will note that it closes tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, if you are interested in being in our next in-person exhibition, it's open for anybody um, that is available on our website. I will put it in the chat here if you're interested in that. Um, there's a tab for Black artists specifically where you'll be able to see how to sign up with us as well as um, uh, be in the open call process. So um, thank you all again for being here. Uh, Rob, so great to have you. Annie, so great to have you. Um, as well as uh, Trap House, all of you have been so, so, so immensely helpful. And like I said, um, this will be recorded and put on our YouTube channel for anybody who needs to rewatch this, because like I said, I definitely will. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for what you're doing for the artistic community in, in, in general, but specifically for Black creatives. It's really appreciated. Um, I see you, I acknowledge you, and I appreciate you. So thank you so much. Cool. Well, have a good night, everybody, and I will see you all later. Bye. Good all. night. Bye.